lush countryside south of Dhaka, 23-year-old Hasina Akta is on a deeply personal journey. Five years ago, her life was shattered. She felt she had lost everything, but now she's claiming a new sense of dignity. Bangladesh is one of the poorest and most crowded countries on earth. In its backstreet workshops, craftsmen use acid to create an object of beauty. But in the wrong hands, it has become a cheap and devastating weapon. This nation's shame is acid throwing. It's a brutal crime which can leave its victims with agonising injuries and a lifetime of rejection. For many years, Bangladesh and the world turned away. But now this country has decided to face its demons. This is the story of the unrelenting courage and determination of the acid survivors and the earnest efforts of a poor nation to mend its ways. The actor family does better than most. There's always food on the table and plenty of company. But something happened in this room five years ago that changed everything. Seventeen-year-old Hasina had been feuding with one of her father's workers. The final argument was over nothing more than a bucket of water. In the middle of the night, he came back with a jar of acid after threatening her earlier in the day. There were months of surgery. But even more painful was the rejection when she returned to the village. One of her classmates fainted, Hasina was shunned from weddings, and pregnant women feared that her presence would make their babies deformed. <laughs> But now there are treasured moments of intimacy. Hasina has fought hard even for the simple pleasure of holding her newborn nephew. It's still a very awkward path to acceptance within the family. Her father knows that Hasina has endless challenges ahead of her. In this overcrowded country, families and family members fight for space. Bangladesh is only twice the size of Tasmania, but is home to more than 160 million people. 
Most of the acid attacks in this country are over land and property disputes. The majority of victims are women and children. At the Acid Survivors Foundation in the suburbs of Dhaka, a new day reveals the latest victim. Though it is small, but uh, still the, she has a lot of you know, deep bones, so she will need surgery. Her name is Amina and she's 20 years old. Attacked 36 hours ago as part of a land dispute between her husband and brother-in-law. Amina has arrived in Dhaka after an agonising journey from her village. How much of a state of shock are the women in when they first arrive like this? Actually in most cases, in all cases, they are frightened because for this girl, coming from a village, maybe it is her first visit to Dhaka, you know, like going abroad. Amina's family has arrived. Their faces show the shock and strain. Outside, her husband Cullum waits. In this case, there's an added twist. Staff here suspect he may have carried out the attack in an attempt to frame his brother. Do you think the husband may have actually thrown the acid in this case? It is possible. In many cases, we have seen that, you know, husband claiming others, you know, that the enemy has done that. It's another perplexing case for Manira Rahman, the head of the Acid Survivors Foundation. This place has its own fully fledged surgical hospital and also offers legal help and much needed counselling. In the past 10 years, she's seen the devastating effects of acid violence on hundreds of lives. The disfigurement is permanent. Whatever the treatment, the plastic surgery we give to them, they cannot get back their formal look. So, uh, and it's in a sudden, you know, that uh, I have changed. Our face is our identity. And when it is changed, then our whole identity is changed. So they have to relearn everything to live a life. It's not only the women who are victimised. Acid throwers also target lives that have barely started. And a warning, what you're about to see is shocking. This is Jonaki. She is six months old and this is her mother. No one here is exactly sure what happened. But in a society that favours boys, girls are often targeted. It almost took Jonaki's life. She was brought here from the filthy ward of a public hospital. All the cockroaches were eating her scars and in seven days she was not treated and uh, in a very bad condition, the hygienic condition was so bad, she had infections. Some of the youngest victims are yet to fully comprehend what has happened to them, let alone start the long journey ahead. This is the weekly art class for children at the Acid Survivors Foundation. Behind the bright colours and chatter are excruciating stories. Twelve-year-old Aisha was attacked with acid by her own father. The six-year-old Shima, her dad lashed out simply because he wanted a baby boy. The father's now out on bail and has reconciled with Shima's mother, but still rejects his little girl. Women and girls are so cheap in this society, so they can destroy them. They can just throw them out. They can get them easily, so it doesn't matter to them. And often these young children are just victims of the cruel mentality of the adult man. Without the foundation, there would be little help for the acid survivors. 
Bangladesh's public health system has only 50 burns beds for the whole country. The Foundation's hospital has become home for a remarkable little boy named Durjoy. His aunt poured acid down his throat when he was only one month old. She was jealous because she didn't have a son of her own. Durjoy has endured repeated surgery. The trauma has strengthened the already unbreakable bond between mother and child. In the grimy jewellery workshops of old Dhaka, craftsmen sweat over their creations. This industry and so many others across the country rely on sulfuric and nitric acid in the production process. But for less than 20 cents, you can buy enough acid to destroy someone's face. Acid is very powerful on human body immediately starts eating the uh, skin and uh, goes underneath and even dissolve the soft bones, sometimes even affects the hard bones. In this workshop, the acid is just kept in a plastic container and is easily accessible. But authorities are trying to change that. In 2002, Bangladesh introduced tough laws to regulate the sale and storage of acid. It's the job of Assistant Police Chief Mahub Alam and his officers to keep stock of acid in this country. If somebody says he must have license to sell it and he must have license if somebody wants to buy it. His challenge is also to clamp down on the attackers. The punishments for acid violence include life imprisonment and the death penalty. Despite the crackdown, only 11% of perpetrators are ever convicted. The assistant chief admits it's not good enough, but he says the cases often get delayed in Bangladesh's already congested legal system. Conviction rate is a little low because of the judicial system. Uh, in that case, uh, we don't have anything to do uh, from the police part. But even then, we are trying to help the court um, in this regard. At this community meeting in the suburbs of Dhaka, police warn of the consequences of acid throwing. This community leader tells police there hasn't been an acid attack in this neighbourhood for five years. The top brass are now taking the issue seriously, but officers on the beat can still be bribed by the perpetrators, and the female victims often withdraw their complaints. If the husband is the attacker, how it is possible for a wife to uh, take legal recourse against the husband, because husband is the breadwinner, and what will happen to the um, children's situation if the father is going to jail? This is part of the campaign to get Bangladeshis thinking about a problem that has been neglected for too long. In this video broadcast on national television, viewers are shown how to give first aid to an acid victim. They're told to douse the burns in running water for at least half an hour. There has been progress. 
The number of acid attacks in Bangladesh has more than halved in the past five years. You might expect those attacked and scarred to want to retreat from the outside world. But some survivors have confronted their changed lives head on, winning opportunities that were once unimaginable. Fazila Nessa was attacked with acid nine years ago after refusing a marriage proposal. But now she's making her own way in the corporate world. Fazila has a job in a call centre. I got a lot of things in my life. I able to express my feelings in everywhere and also I can share everywhere. I can lead my life independently. I'm able to earn money and I am able to lead my life. As well as working full time, Fazila has just finished a Bachelor of Arts and her dream is to get her PhD. It's an enlightened workplace, but even here, image is still important. Everyone, my colleagues, they are so smart. They are always aware about their beauty. They are always, they are go missed. Most of the time, they are gossiping. His main topic is beauty. In Bangladesh, it's extremely rare for a woman to live independently and rent her own apartment. But after her attack, Fazila left traditional village life behind to chase her dreams in Dhaka. I am leading my life independently. No one is asking me, no one is uh, disturbing me. I can do anything I want to now eat anything. I can eat, I want to learn, I want to watch a movie now, I can. Fazila has overcome challenge after challenge, but she will always carry the scars of the attack. She still finds it difficult to look at herself in the mirror. Yes, it's too difficult for me because I still know I, I can't accept it really. Um, yes, but I believe my uh, beauty is not in my face, my beauty is my inside, but I am not yet able to see my face, whole face in my mirror. Another survivor has moved on with her life and is trying to help other victims. Asina Akta, the young woman we first met, is now working in the legal unit of the Acid Survivors Foundation. The lawyers here helped to convict Hasina's perpetrator. She came face to face with him after he was arrested. I mean, Years after they were disfigured, even a simple trip to the market can be humiliating. Despite the strength of the survivors, sometimes it's impossible to shut out the moments of hurt. Sometimes I feel it's my fate or sometimes I feel that uh, why it's happened in my life. Why I could not find any answer really. Sometimes I really feel that why it's happened in my life. I often ask them, you know, how do you feel about that situation to face, you know, these strange comments. And uh, they said, you know, some of them said that um, there is no night that my pillow is not wet. So you can imagine what, you know, pain, what sufferings is actually going within them. Hasina and Fazila have paid a high price for their independence. They grew up thinking their future may take them no further than their home village. But the irony is that the injuries and rejection which closed some doors have opened others. <laughs> For many women in Bangladesh, happiness is a luxury, 
What's important is daily survival. But Fazila Nessa dares to dream the future may hold freedom and a family of her own. With my um, son and daughter, children, with my children, yeah, and also hopefully we will able to change our society. Also, hopefully after ten years we will see you. there is no acid violence in Bangladesh. A senior actor keeps going by concentrating on what she has rather than what she's lost. Despite her trauma, she's grateful for the beauty of the eye that fate left behind. Last year in this desperately poor country, 179 lives were changed forever in a flash. Tough punishments and public awareness have only gone so far. This vile practice is unlikely to stop for as long as some in Bangladesh regard acid and women's lives as cheap. <laughs>